Florida. This is the Palmer Show Plus One, Episode One, part of the still part of the Digitent Podcast Network. They thank you. They stayed with us. Uh, the show dives deep into topics that matter most. With Ke- hold on, let's try again. This is all new. All right, this is all new. No, no, we're just keep rolling, keep rolling. We're sorry. <laughs> yeah. This show dives deep into the topics that matter most with captivating guests. Join us as we explore the issues shaping. I didn't even come out. This show dives deep into the topics that matter most with... Ca- okay, here we go. This sh- Take number four. <laughs> this show dives deep into the topics that matter most with captivating guests. Join us as we explore the issues shaping our world and uncovering insights that will leave you thinking. Get ready for a thought-provoking... I'll, I'll get better at this. Wow. Get ready for a thought-provoking conversation. Let's dive in. If you'd like to put your products in front of thousands of listeners every week on 17... Well, we we kept the listeners. I've kept all the old uh, RSS feeds, the YouTube Thank you for subscribing without even knowing. Yes, thank you very much. (laughs) If you'd like to put your products in front of thousands of listeners every week on 17 different podcast providers all around the world, all you have to do is email old Marv. Still email Omarv, M-A-V-A-L-L-O-N-E at thedigitant.com for price and more information. And he still likes his feet pics. Uh, yeah, and please remember to, to rate. <laughs> you know, he didn't say anything about that when I was talking to him. I was surprised. <laughs> I, I swear he doesn't listen. We and know pl- he doesn't. And please remember to rate, review, and subscribe, whichever variety you use. Tonight, uh, as our plus one, we have John Richards from the YouTube channel Lovesick Christians. Go to two, please. Uh, we're going to discuss, has religion become big business tonight with John? So, John, first, uh, tell us a little bit about your YouTube page. Let's get that plugged and uh, get that going for you. Yeah, so mainly the YouTube page is just sermons, teachings, content, my life, my family's life, you know, business, and just kind of everyday living and how we live every day in love with Christ right. and to grow more to look like Christ. How long have you had it? Um... Man, active probably about a year and a half. Oh, okay, but just doing fairly the, new. In fairly the new, work. yeah. Absolutely. But around long enough where everybody goes, he's not just some fly by night thing. Yeah, no. I mean, I've worked. I, I've been to multiple Bible colleges. I uh, part of a local church. Uh, members of a local church in my family. You know, we've we've been around ministry for right. you know ever since we got saved. So we've been kind of in and around church for around ten years and. Just kind of seeing the culture of it and then how we can change that culture. Right. So is that what you're trying to do with your YouTube page? Yeah, absolutely. Just Bring more people to the message yeah. and, and maybe help them understand. Oh. No. Me? Yeah, you're, you're wandering oh, a little sorry, bit. Oh, sorry, man. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's, sorry. It's, it's a habit. You just gotta it's a habit. It. It's a habit. Yeah, no, I think, you know, a lot of people will assume the tenets of Christianity right. or their idea of Christianity right. uh, versus... Uh, the all immersive idea of what the scripture tells us Christianity is. Like, right. I think the difference is people say, especially in America, we're so com- compartmentalized, right? We have work and then we have life and then we have family and then we have weekend and then, you know, that right. Kind of stuff. Yeah, yeah. But the gospel is meant to permeate every, every Everything, atom right. of that. Absolutely. You're very, yeah. you're very right yeah. though. Everybody's like, okay, Sunday morning's church day. That's yeah. the day I do the church stuff. And yeah. then Saturday night I'm not drinking. Yeah. Like fine. God is blind Monday to Saturday night. Right. You know? <laughs> He he's just covering his eyes. Just maybe, I don't know. Maybe he's a fan of the show. Maybe he watches our podcast. Who knows? <laughs> I hope so. All right, let's get us start with the first question. Then yeah. uh, we'll see how these uh, progress and what yeah. kind of uh, t- uh, debates we can get into going on. Sure. All right. So here's the first one. Do you think that the commercialization of religion is a recent phenomenon, or has it been present throughout history in different forms? So. I would say that this has happened or been attempted to happen through the through the ages of church. Right. right? This is this is no this is no new. It's not a new um, thing. No, not at no, all. No. Is, so there's a story of in the 1850s, 1860s. Charles Spurgeon was in London. Right. And P. T. Barnum asked him to come and preach the gospel and preach and do a sermon before his circus opened. Right. And P. T. Barnum sent him a letter. Charles Spurgeon sends him a letter back and says, "Sir, thank you for your invitation, but you'll find my answer in Acts 13:10." Which is... <laughs> oh, so he didn't get the... Now you have to go read the Bible. Okay, exactly Two, right. please. So it's, uh, it's, it's an interesting concept because Acts 13 tends very... Back on the microphone. Back on the there, microphone. <laughs> Back on the microphone. <laughs> we there told we you. Go. I yeah. got you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You'll, you'll get the hang of it. So Acts 13 10 says, 
Uh, you're you who are full of deceit and fraud, you son of the devil, you enemy of oh, all wow. righteousness. Oh, shit. You Jeez. you not cease to make the crooked path straight ways of the Lord. So how how long are you going to tempt the Lord? So basically, Spurgeon says, I'm not coming to your circus. You're not getting made to be this right. sideshow. You think it'd be a great idea? Sure, but you, I think tons of people absolutely. get the message out. Well, and I think that's kind of where this kind of understanding of what church is and what church isn't gets right. gets skewed. Okay. Because I think we can come to church and say, who is church for? Right. If, if Sunday morning is for the unbeliever to get people saved, to get people in the rooms so they can hear about Christ. Okay. That's great. Right. But we have to look at the scripture. And so if if scripture is the ultimate authority on how we do everything in life, if right. we're, we're going to be Christians and we're going to submit to God's will and God's ways, then church is three basic tenants, and it's in this order. Church exists to worship and preach Christ. Right. Church exists to equip the saints, meaning the, the believers. Okay. And then thirdly, church is to equip those saints, send them out, and reach the world. Okay. So it's in So that. it's bring the people in, yep. talk to the people that are already here, yep. and then those people go out and bring more people in. Right, exactly right. Okay. And, and so I think where we've gone, we've hung a left in America, right. is we've, we've said Sunday morning is for the unsaved and unchurched. Right, and so we've. I would used, agree to that. And I could so, agree. I I think the problem with that is that that's not how church looks in the scripture. Right, and so when when you change that, uh, I think J. I. Packer has a quote where he says, "What you win them with, you win them too." Okay. So if you bring people in with you know Sunday dinners and I, right. I, ice cream socials and a Ferris wheel, right, you have to keep perpetuating that. Well, sure, or they're, they're going to lose they're, interest they're, and go. They're going to go somewhere else. Right. Versus, what happened to the ice cream? Exactly. Right. And so Spurgeon also says in a different sermon, a different place, he says, if men will not come to hear about Christ and him crucified, draw them by no other means. Okay. And so John chapter six is very clear. Jesus or John chapter five, Jesus says, if you I could be, say the one, the two of us really don't. Know. Right. And so he says, if I be lifted up, I'll draw all men unto myself. Back in the mic. Oh, sorry. <laughs> if I, if I draw all men, if I be lifted up, I will draw all men unto myself. Okay. And so we see here that Christ is saying, I am the thing that draws people in, and I'm right. the thing that keeps the people. Right. And so church primarily is exclusive in so the sense you don't sense need the ice cream and the Ferris wheels and everything. Or at least no. you're not supposed to. You're not supposed to. But exactly unfortunately, right. unfortunately you, that's what happens. Right. Because I actually looked at the word commercialization. Right. It's an interesting definition. Okay. It is to lead or manage something to specifically make a profit. Oh, wow. And so if we're going to talk about commercialization of church, that's a whole nother conversation because now, right. now we're talking about your end goal is not to worship Christ, not to love Christ, not to love the world, and to tell them that they need a savior and, right. they're, and they lie open to judgment and hell and death and all of those things. But now you're trying to turn a profit. That, that's a complete 180. From we were just the, talking about yeah, this, too. Go back yeah. to two. Say on two for a little bit. Uh, so, I mean, they have to have money because it's, Absolutely. It, it, they got to pay the power bill. Yeah. They got to pay the water bill. They got to... Stuff costs money. Stuff costs money. <laughs> stuff costs true. money. I never thought about the uh, the aspect of uh, profit. Yeah. Profit. That, that, that's what commercialization literally it, means. Because they're, it's a non-profit. It's, a non, it's, it's right. supposed to be. Yeah, supposed exactly. to be. So all the money yeah. that comes in is supposed to go back out. It's supposed to go back. Exactly right. Yeah. Nice. So it's interesting because John Wesley, the leader of the Great Awakening, the the, the, the second Great Awakening, the starter of Methodism. Okay. Um, he had I don't more, even know what that is. What is Methodism? The United Methodist Church. Oh, Methodist Church. So if you see a so Methodist, you said Methodist Church. Methodism, yeah. I was thinking something completely Sorry, different. No. Oh, okay. So the Methodism, basically, John Wesley started that movement. Okay. Uh, him and George Whitfield. So in the 1730s or so. And so John Wesley had more money passed through his hands right. than had ever existed on the planet. Oh, wow. He funded orphanages. He funded churches, church plants, missions. Just to get rid of the money. Exactly right. And so he actually has a quote where he says, as soon as I get some money, I look for a way to give it away so that it doesn't enter into my heart. Because money that, is- That sounds perfect. Absolutely. Money, That's what you should do with it. Money is amoral. Right. Money has no morality. Right. It's about why you're trying to bring this money in, and then what is the money unto? Is the money right. unto a Lamborghini? Is the money unto an orphanage? Because then you can give millions of dollars away. Charles Spurgeon had millions of dollars in 1850. Right. Oh, yeah. He, was, I mean, that's a lot back then. Because he was the most popular preacher on the planet. Okay. But he wrote George Jeffries, or not George Jeffries. What am I thinking? George Mueller. Uh, yeah, I was silly. A million, George, <laughs> George Jeffries. I can't believe that big dog is that George Jeffries. Uh, he wrote him, he wrote him a million dollar check for right. his orphanage. And George Mueller ha had a distinction from the Lord to never ask for money. Oh. And so Charles Spurgeon sent him a million dollar check to help this orphanage fund. And so that's, that's where the church becomes a family. It's, we're going to help you. We're going to bear your burdens. Right. We're, we're going to work with you. We're not in competition with one another. 
But I think that's where we've gotten confused and big business has kind of warped our minds with the culture. Right. Is it said that they're your direct competition? You think it's big business or you think it's greed? Uh, I think I, it's I, greed. Maybe, maybe greed's an ugly word to use. Well, maybe I'm, there's something that's, like I it. mean, that's a biblical word. No, right, but right. I mean, you know. At the same time, it's a word that's describing something that you're profiting on people that right. worship something or believe in something. And now these people are donating, like we were talking about earlier, the 10% right. of their pay. But where is it going? It's not going out to an orphanage. Right. It's going to the Lamborghini. Right. And I think, right. Well, not not always. Let's not, not, let's yeah, not, okay, categor- not, let's not, not categorize always, it. No. Everybody's buying I, I'll keep thinking about that dude, the, the, what's his name? Joel. Uh, Joel Osteen. Joel Osteen. Yeah, how the hell does he have a fucking $75 million house? Well, <laughs> I, I, I think the interesting thing about Joel, though, just, just to play devil's advocate, I mean, you know, but it's, he doesn't take a salary from the church. So no, but, none of those guys see, really do, but th- w- what they but, have is book sales. They have all of these because his books are so popular. Yeah. So then where so do I they mean, where do they get? Okay, they don't take salaries. Fine. Yeah. It's like the president. Like what's his name? Didn't take a salary when he was president. Trump. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly, but still, yeah. things get paid for. He only. I mean, the president. I mean, really. Yeah. The, the president gets not, paid. It's yeah, quarter it's million a, dollars. It's not a lot of money. I understand. <laughs> not like an no. MLB contract. Right. 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 <laughs> but I mean, okay. So Joel Osteen doesn't take a thing, but. Yeah. I mean, he, how did he buy his big fancy cars now? Well, from from just the books and no, the speaking I mean, engagements and things? I, yeah, I'm sure. I'm, I mean, because they, I mean, they, I mean, they do things where they 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 take their their message around the world and they go right. to different stadiums and stuff like that. Right. But I would disagree. So with, it's really just a way to say something because there's other ways that you can make money. Oh, of course, right. Well, but again, so like, it's like I'm a nice guy. I don't take a salary. Right. And would I, you like to buy my book? Well, and I think again, I think a lot of this comes from it's not about. Like, how much money do you have and how much money do you not have? It's more about the content and how you're getting that money. Right. Because Joel's message is not the message of Jesus Christ. It's not, it's right. not a gospel. Right. And so when you look at his message versus the first century apostles and Jesus himself, you see that the two things couldn't be more different. Right. One yeah. is, you know, hey, you know, if you add Jesus to your life, you're going to have a swell time. And the other one is deny yourself, pick up your cross and follow me. Right. So you couldn't be more. Di- so that's why Joel is so profitable because his message is so universally beloved. Oh, right. It's so easy to yeah, write. So, I mean, think about it. If anyone writes that book, they're going to make millions of dollars. Because ever- you don't make a note. We're writing a book. <laughs> I'm already writing one right now. Okay, good. All mm. right. But it's, it's completely different. To- we're not discussing this book with religion. We'll put it that way. <laughs> oh, okay. Oh, I, I'm going to. I mean, what the heck? <laughs> <laughs> no, but yeah. So, so I think it's, this has always been a ploy to, I mean, especially e- e- even in the Bible, we see this in Acts chapter eight, Simon, the sorcerer tries to buy the Holy spirit from Peter. Okay. And so actually a mist comes upon his eyes and he, he's blind. I'm not familiar with that story. I know a yeah. lot of Bible stories, but not yeah. one about what was his name? Simon, the sorcerer, Simon, the sorcerer, yeah. sorcerer, like Harry but, Potter. Li- I mean, Hey, I mean, wow. so, I'm so, gonna he, have to so he comes here and he says, you know, Hey, I want to buy this power from you. Right. And they're like, that's not how this works. Yeah. No, you can't. It's not a, yeah. not a price. And, and so this, this idea of money manipulation and kind of, you know, coercing people into changing the message message right. has always been, it's always been around. It's always been around. I mean, think about it. Like, you had false prophets in the Old Testament. Oh, Isa- sure, yeah. I mean, Isaiah's prophesying, hey, we're under judgment, guys. God's going to bring judgment. And the false prophets are saying, you guys are fine. Right. Everything's you don't okay. have to do any. Come on. God's happy. He's, He's in fine. a good mood. Right. Give it a break. He you loves know? us Take all. Take it, it easy. In the book. Yeah. And so I think I, I think that's where you get really, really twisted, just just foundationally. Because if, if your goal is to reach lost people, you can't use carnal or worldly means to reach them right you can't become like the world to win the world because then how are you going to win what do you win them to you're using you, you look the same i see i completely confused but i understand yeah, what you're sorry, saying yeah, no, sorry, no, no, sorry. no 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 you're fine you're fine <laughs> i'm exhausted already that's just question one <laughs> damn are we doing this like uh what was it the rapid fire rapid fire rapid fire no no i mean he's got notes and the, i i gave i'm sorry. i'm no 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 you're fine you're fine uh, this is different than the other show. The uh, the guests get the questions in advance. Mm. So they're, oh, so I, got, they're, they're, I know nothing they're, still. They're prepared. Well, yeah, I like to keep you that way. So you're you're the blank slate over there because you don't know what's going on. That's your purpose. You're the you're the tablica rocker or whatever it's called. <laughs> Sorry, Brandon. <laughs> you're fine. <laughs> I'm telling Marv. <laughs> Do you think so? Okay, so we answered one. All yeah, right, one. Whew, one. God, we got one out of the way. Okay, one. number two. <laughs> What are some examples of how religious institutions or figures have engaged in commercial uh, commercial activities? Yeah. You've, you've sort of already touched on absolutely. that, absolutely. Right? Yeah, absolutely. 
So if, if a church is building, how big, does it say in the Bible how big that they need to get, or or is it just the num- number of people that they can reach is what's going on? Yeah, I mean, I mean, the interesting thought is is that it we don't win anybody to Christianity. Right. Like I can't go outside and go up to a person and if I can convince if I can convince them okay to be like oh Jesus is great like that's that's cool but the Bible is very clear that we have to be born again meaning the Holy Spirit needs to literally make someone a new person save okay. them and take them from death to life that doesn't happen though from your conversation uh, it can but it has to happen from God God has to do the saving I I, I can't save anybody right right so so it's kind of like it, it would be like somebody coming back from war declaring a victory okay and the people hear that victory. And then either they, they either submit to it or they rebel. Right. Right. Like that's, it's not on me. The okay. victory has been won. Christ is King. Christ is ruling and reigning in heaven. He commands all men everywhere to repent. And it's my job to preach that gospel. Oh, so you're just giving them like the, the, the notes or something. Yeah. Uh, just giving it. I, this is what you got to do. I'm, but just, you, I'm just relaying the message. Right. You're just yeah. sending the message. Absolutely. Gotcha. Okay. I can't, I can't save anybody. So, when you look at the book of Acts... So is that any man can't save anybody? This, yeah, is, a, no. this is a weird thing for me to no, find no, this out. Nobody can save any... I, I can't save you from hell. I can't right? do it. God has to save can't, you from I hell. mean, you're you're not technically a pastor, right? You, whatever, been, no, been, yeah, yeah, been yeah. ordained yeah, or, no, or no, no, no. you know, they hit you with the sword or whatever. I, I have not been That's ordained. Not okay. <laughs> 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 oh, you're, you're like knighted, the you know? Sword. Ping, ping, you know? Oh, I, no. I you, the, you got the, the no. queen with the ugly teeth, you know? <laughs> okay, this is kind of a sidebar thing. But, yeah, okay, we, no, 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 I, yeah, yeah. I understand how a Catholic sure. priest works. Sure. Uh, yeah, Lutheran. Uh, sure. Yeah, yeah. So what about a non-denominational church? So what, what do you have to be to be in charge of that? In charge? Well, to be um, like the head pastor. Yeah, yeah, sure. I like mean, you decide you want to start a church. The interesting thing is with non-denominational, that's kind of in the name. Right. So, so, it's so just, you can pretty much just be like, I had a vision. I feel like the Lord spoke to me. Right. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get this building. So it's okay, like open right. to interpretation kind of thing. Pretty much. And okay. that's kind of where these places become a law unto themselves. And that's where it gets dangerous. Okay. So it, 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 it kind of works like a tiny pope. Mm-hmm. Like like a, like a Protestant pope, you know what I mean? Okay, it's one guy at the top. Right, he, he facilitates his vision. Right, right. He tells everybody, and he and insulates then, himself. Right, he's got a know, group yeah. of people. A one hundred percent. And so that's that's kind of the pandemic of what we were seeing. Right. in America, is a lot of these places popping up with God said this, and I I, I believe this, and I'm going to do that, and I and I and there's no and there's no rules. Exactly. Because there's no plurality of elders, like the scripture says. There's no there's no congregational like voting. There's no sort of nobody has right. any authority. As long as you can except, get a dozen people to follow you around. Uh huh. Exactly right. And so, and so a lot of this have there's been a lot of cult like tendencies with some of these fringe Pentecostal charismatic non denominational. Oh, the snake churches. people. I like the snake. Not people. the snake people. <laughs> I, like I, the people I think, like, I think uh, everyone's uh, kind of uh, decided uh, that yeah. there's a snake. Oh, oh those, yeah. that's, that's the only church I haven't been to. But I'm dying. You haven't been to a snake church. No. I, there, I, wait, I, hold on. I wouldn't time advise out. it. No, well, I'm not going to handle the snake. I wouldn't advise there's an actual it. snake church. Oh yeah, in like oh, yeah, the yeah. mountains of West Virginia, they handle rattlesnakes and stuff. Oh yeah, the the Lord is going to protect them. And then if you because the scripture says in Mark 16:18 that they'll pick up serpents and they'll trample upon scorpions. But Jesus is oh, not speaking. The he's not speaking literally. He's speaking figuratively right, about right. the demonic powers and principalities in the air and right. things like this. So, yeah, he's so not, you, so you got a bunch of people on Sunday running around carrying rattlesnakes and shit. It's well, not, they take them out of a box in the front. It's not. It's not that. Many, it's videos. not that many churches. <laughs> it's not as big a thing as it used to be. You know, you know, Here's the thing. Here's the thing. The news only reports on plane crashes. They don't report on the nine thousand <laughs> planes that land safely. Yeah, they every land day. every single day. Good so point. There, there, there's a lot of churches out there that are faithful. They're men of God. They preach the word. They love their people and they disciple them, but that's not sexy. It doesn't sell. No. So when Joel Osteen won't open his doors for the people that are flooded and they don't have anywhere to go, that sells. Right. That's like, oh Bad man. publicity like, is better than no publicity. Get in there. Oh, like right. you gotta, you gotta film that. That that's good stuff. Or some scandal happens. Yeah. It's that, that's easy. You know, the old journalism adage is true. If it bleeds, it leads. It's just the reality of <laughs> It's just the reality of what's going on. Wow, we didn't already just, have a title for the episode. That would be it. <laughs> if it bleeds, it leads. That might be it. What was the <laughs> lips or lips in the dark? The Shit, don't don't cross shows. I'm sorry. If it bleeds, it leads. I have heard that before. Okay, so another question. Then we'll get back to these questions. <laughs> Several years ago, I was at a wedding, mm. and there was a, a thing that the uh, the pastor or whoever was doing the service got stuck in traffic. Might not show. Yeah. So I go online. Sure. Like, I can cover this. I got this. Not a problem. Sure. Go online, answer a couple of questions. Yeah. I'm technically an ordained minister. Sure. Okay. But what, I mean, that just seems ridiculous. It is. 
I mean, I'm, 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 I'm not trying to be mean no, no, to anybody. No, 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 no. I mean, I basically, I I basically said, yeah, I'll be a good person. Right, yeah, I'm yeah, not going to yeah. touch children. Right. And here's my 1995. Right. So that's not the qualifications right. for being a leader well, in the church. <laughs> Well, it's just as good as the non-denominational. It actually is a little I step mean, better. I mean, to be I honest, have a minister you, parking pass on so, my car. So some people See, say I lost that years ago. So, I got one too. So some people will say that oh, they, you, you, you have to go to Bible college or you have to go here right. or there. But there are characteristics of a man of God or an elder in the church, whatever you right. want to call it, elder bishop. They're in First Timothy chapter three. It's he must be well respected in the community. The man of one wife, not given to wine, leading his household like well. Only have ever had one wife or just one wife at a time. <laughs> well, so that's open to interpretation. So, some okay. denominations will say that if you've been divorced, you can't be a pastor. That's just those Catholics. It's good that uh, you're a It's reverend. actually Assemblies of God, too. Oh. Uh, mm, yeah, so Assemblies okay. of God, Pentecostal, will say if you've been divorced at any at any point, you cannot be a pastor. However, I don't- I'm sorry, you're not Catholic, are you? No, no, no. no. Okay, I, I was raised right. Catholic. Okay. What, no, no, I just it, don't want to offend. I'm, I'm not meaning to offend. I'm going to be a little off color. And, no, it's and good. We're crack I, jokes. Hey, okay. I, that's what we're here for. I, right? I just it's don't want to offend you. John, what is your denomination? So I am a Reformed Baptist. Okay. Or particular Baptist in the vein of, you know, kind of. Okay. So Calvinism. Just is, making sure we're not going into too far into jokes or something. No, no, no. Like, hey, look, I'm, I, you guys have. I didn't want to say any Catholic jokes and, no, you know, I, if you were. I, I am not able to be offend, but offended by you guys. Because you guys, oh, are, I don't, know. Oh, don't say that. That's Challenge good. accepted. Look, I mean, hey, here's the thing. As long as we're not going to get into like, you know, Jesus jokes. No, 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 no. Any, any sort of. And no, then, I do believe it. I don't want right. to piss him off. Well, yeah. Right. I mean, yeah, it's not, yeah. it's not, it's not a good thing to do. Right. You know, you know, <laughs> you know so, the outside chance that is it. I don't want to, you know, make him mad. Well, and that's the thing. I think a lot of places will say like, come as you are. Right. And that's great. However, you don't stay as you are. Right. Yeah, and yeah. so. With that understanding, there has to be a confrontation. There has to be in a, in a sermon or any sort of preaching from the pulpit. We have to call sin, sin. We have to call people to repent. We have to speak about these things as they are in the scripture. Jesus is the only way to heaven. There's no side. There's no skirting the fence. There's, <laughs> there's no, no hopping over the no back door. No, there's no the back, fence. No. Exactly right. And, and, and so if those things are not agreed upon, there needs to be a confrontation. I'm here with John Richards. He right. said I could get in so I mentioned his name. <laughs> no, it doesn't work like that. That's the thing. <laughs> That then that's, that's I see the, him right over there. Right, John, John, right over right here. And that and that's what's gonna go. I don't know. Him. And, 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 and again, like that's you know, at the end of the day, like this commercialization has muddied the waters on a lot of things because I think if we're not going to preach the the Bible as as it as it stands, right? There's like lighter versions, right? Exactly yeah. right. And so if you're gonna water it down. To Pick and choose what it is right. that you're going to go after. hundred percent. Right. And so if you're going to be like, all right, well, you know, God is love. Then, and that's true. Right. God is love. That right. is his essence. Absolutely. But God also has other essential attributes like right. holiness and justice and, you know, immutability. He can't change. So like things like there's more, there's more theology <gasps> to God than just he's love. And then he's right, your right, definition right. Yeah. of love. So if he's your definition of love then you can set whatever you want. What, whatever bar works for you is fine. But there, this is the standard. And if we're not going to live up to this, then we can't bear the name Christian. So, how, but there's different versions of the Bible too, right? Sure. But they're, you know, they're, it, so they're all basically the same. I mean, I've only read one and not right, all the yeah, way yeah. through. Yeah. I mean, the, the, the Bible has been, it, it hasn't been changed. The, right. the Bible is infallible and inerrant, meaning that it is perfect and has been written by God through men. Right. And so it's presented to us and there are different variations of it. Um, but the, if you look at the, st the statistics are wild with how many manuscripts we have and how much they, they line up. Right. Um, we only have about less than 17 copies of the Iliad. Right. Like Homer's. Right. Iliad story. And, the Odyssey. Yeah. and so we only have about 50 copies of those combined. Ah. So the Bible has thousands of manuscripts, right? Along with the Dead Sea Scrolls from the Old Testament, we have so much information that gives us so much validity that this is actual words, written by words different people in different yeah. parts of the world. Absolutely and all this right. Stuff. Yeah, okay. sixty-six, uh, well, forty-seven different authors. But yeah, forty-seven. Yeah, everybody wants a piece of the pie. <laughs> hey, it sells. All right, well, one selling enough. book of all time. <laughs> yeah, it Sorry, is. I don't mean, I don't I, mean to laugh. I, I, at no, that. it's true. It's a fact. It really is a fact. There's two in my house. It's I mean, also the most stolen book of all time. Oh, because you take it from the you take it from the hotels. I know a few people that it may or may not have taken one from a hotel room. See, that well, was, they, that, they 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 want you to it, take those. Hey, that's, that's why they're it, there. That's what it's there for. It's the they're Gideons, for. man. Right, mm. those guys. See, if you ever look through it, sometimes people hide money in them. Yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah, my grandma did. Oh yeah. So we go into a church. You just. 
no, no, not, no, a church, no. not a church. When you go into the hotel. My grandma yeah. was very, very religious, Episcopalian. Mm. But she had one on every nightstand, every end table. And then she had one on the bookshelf that she actually, that was part of her retirement. Oh, she, no, I she mean, hit she, sta- she hit it. No, no. People do it in hotels for the next person to find. Well, now that I, since I travel so damn much. I was going to say, be, you travel a lot. Maybe you should start I'm going to start shaking some Bibles when I go to the <laughs> That's, That's not, not so. for you. Damn it. <laughs> you should hide one of your watches in there. That would be a nice gift. Oh, yeah. Just cut the, <laughs> no, cut no. the pages out on the inside. <laughs> All right. How do you think the, the commercialization of religion impacts the perception of faith and spirituality in society? We've already, we've already touched oh, on this, yeah, too. Oh, yeah, absolutely. I mean, you know, so many people say, well, I don't want to go to church. They just want my money. Right. And it's like, okay, that's... That may have been true of that that one church, right? But that's not true. Well, of don't they everybody. all have to sort of mention that as part of the thing because they have to have money to operate? Well, I mean, here's the thing. So, so talking about giving, there's there's a perception in the hyper charismatic, hyper Benny Hinn world, right? The Kenneth Copeland, you know, Jesse Duplantis, give me money for my giant plane, right, all right. that kind of stuff. There's this. There's this. You know, understanding that you have to give ten percent of your income to the church or to whatever. That seems person. to be standard on all religions. That's like something yeah. everybody holds yeah, you, to. You have to give whatever. But the new let's Test- all say ten percent. That's a number everybody can uh, can live with. Apparently, well, so. that's because the Old Testament says tithe, and tithe means right. tenth. Oh, does it really? Yeah, yeah. So that's oh, what okay. So, oh. so that, that that's what they get that from. Okay. But I'm going to call you every Sunday afternoon when I get home from church. I <laughs> just fact check everything. Yeah. John, that's what this guy said. What does this mean? Just go to the, go to this. The, this will help you. Better. You know where it's at, though. <laughs> No, it's so, not tabs and so, indexes. Is there an index in the well, back? I can look th- stuff. There's up? tabs in here. Yeah. Well, yeah, but I don't know what those tabs. Are. <laughs> so, so Second Corinthians, Paul talks about uh, sacrificial giving, right? Like being a cheerful giver, and so some people these these deceptive teachings have have worked their way into the church, where people will say um, they, they'll say things like this. Um, people say I can't afford to tithe. Well, I tell them you can't afford not to. Right, yeah. Well, I right, think right. that's ridiculous. Yeah. If you can't feed your family, why are you giving them ten percent? Right. Because we don't. Because we've we, we've been we've been sold a lie that if you give enough money, God will eventually get you out of the hole that you are in. All right, and that way you can buy your way into heaven. Exactly. Yeah. And, yeah, yeah. And, 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 and so that's not that's not what we're doing. That's not what the gospel is. The gospel is Christ was crucified and bore my punishment and the wrath of God that I deserved, and I now have the righteousness that Christ has. Right. Because he bore my punishment. There's an exchange there. So I can't come into God's presence because I did good or did bad. I come into God's presence based upon the merits of Jesus Christ. Right. So we're already in as far as... Uh, right. As long as you... Technically. As long as, as long as you have trusted in Christ and Christ alone and right. not of your own works, right. you, are, you have been born again. Gotcha. By, by faith. So as long as you accept it... Yeah. You're you're in. Yeah, and again, right. and, and and I keep trying to tell my wife that all the time. Well, She's like, then, I haven't been a good person. I'm like, what do you mean you haven't been a good person? Well, again, but being being I a killed being, anybody. being a good person and being a bad person. Well, no, no, true, but I right. mean, she's you know, the reason we go to church. So, right. I mean, if if I think I'm getting in, she's got to right. be there already, or or I can well, get her in. I was gonna say, is there like a like a spectrum or something like you know like a chart? No, there's either in or out. There's um, no oh. Bi- what about a purgatory? Bi- bi- biblically, purgatory was a Catholic invention. <laughs> Um, to, Catholics again. to deal with infant side. Ah, the, because it, Catholics. Don't they get the, we're in, getting off all did sorry, sorry, sorts of things. I'm having a great in, in, infant side, meaning meaning the 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 child mortal, mortality rate was about ninety percent back way 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 back. Yeah. So what happened was is the Catholic Church was like these babies weren't baptized and they died. So they're like, well, they can't be in hell. But they can't be in heaven because but they, they can't be in heaven because they weren't baptized, right? right? So original sin. So they're like, ah. Uh, and then what happened was, then you can do <laughs> baptism. Then you can do baptisms for the dead to like jet them out of purgatory, and you can do like masses for the dead. That still happens today. Catholic churches will Wait. do masses for the dead, like in the name of my dead grandma, and she eventually gets enough grace to like get jetted out and I've go to heaven. Heard Could you? Baptizing dead people. Oh yeah, it's in for First Corinthians fifteen. They talk oh, about I'm baptizing sure. the dead. See, he knows fuck? right where yeah. everything is. In I'm there. T- it's in there. I'm telling you. I'm just imagining, like you're 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 in the middle of like a torture down in hell, and all of a sudden you're just ejected out, and there's puppies and angels. <laughs> well, no, it's not. Well, no, it's not real. It's uh, just it, it means an invention. So it's yeah. like it's kind of like Mormonism. You know, how Mormonism will say that every the, <laughs> those the, crazy Mormons. Mo- Mormons Sorry. will say there's no hell, and everyone goes to this like weird like cloud kingdom. And then eventually, like if you get enough grace, and there's like weird Mormons walking around this this place preaching with all their wives, pre- preaching everything. Mormonism. And then eventually, if you believe in the Mormon gospel in that place, you get jetted out to the celestial kingdom and you get your own planet and all that kind of stuff. 
Wow, you get a planet. Mormonism is wow. weird, man. Mormonism is bizarre. I it's used to work bizarre. with some Mormons, and we used to talk about it all the time. Yeah. I get fascinated by this stuff. Oh, all Mo- the Mormonism! Mormonism is bizarre. It's almost as weird as Jehovah's Witnesses. Do you so, think they go door to door up in heaven, Jehovah Witnesses? <laughs> no, but I had Jehovah's Witnesses come to my door, and they told <laughs> me, oh. and they told me that Let's sit down and talk about. It. Come on in, let me get my book. Yeah, they came back. He was like, "I'm going to bring my dad." I was like, "Bring all of them. Let's go. Come <laughs> bring, on, bring everybody. Bring I, everybody. Got, I got books for everybody." <laughs> and so he said, he literally told me that Jesus was the brother of Michael. It, or he was Michael the Archangel. And I was like, I don't, I can't help you, man. I don't know what to tell <laughs> Dude, you anymore. I don't show know. me where it says that. This book, is bizarre. This is just so strange. Anywhere. So it here. was just, it was a very strange conversation. But yeah, so that that perception of church, this like crazy, they just want my money, this kind of thing. I forgot but, what question we were working on. We're, sorry. So Paul, but what Paul talks about, Paul talks about a okay. a sacrificial giver, right? Meaning, I've seen this happen. Some people can't give ten percent, right? And some people hide behind ten percent. Meaning, oh, they could give more. They could give more. They could afford more, but, but they like, don't. You know what? You only ask for ten. Yeah, because here's the thing: I I tithe, guys. I tithe. Right. And it's like, yeah, but there's like a single mom in the congregation that can't feed her kids. Right. So the the church is not individualistic, as America would put it. Right. We we are literally one body where Christ is the head of that body. Okay. And so Christ makes the rules. And so there we are a we're the body of Christ. So we we're not segmented. We're not a bunch of amputated fingers and toes walking around. You know what I right, mean? Right, right, right. We are we are all interconnected and we're right. all one. And so, so if, if the rich guy can give more and the poor lady can't, he should give a little more. Exactly. Or, or he should give it to her. Oh, that, you know what I mean? Matter, or like right, or yeah, just yeah. take care of her. Or like right. bear one the Bible says in Galatians six one, bear one another's burdens and so fulfill the law of Christ. Right. And so if if one if one part of the body's hurting like, if I break my arm, right. I'm not going to go, oh, my other arm's working fine. Right. You right. know, it's good. Right. But, like, if one, got one arm. if one part of the body suffers, the whole body suffers. Right. The whole body fights that you. infection. So so that's kind of the the, the idea of giving. Like, my, me and my family, we tithe. We, we, we tithe off of gross income. Absolutely. However... If we need to give more, or if somebody has, there's somebody else who needs somebody something. else who needs something, or someone has a ministry that they want to they want to go preach the gospel. Like a friend of mine, we we, we support them. He preaches all, all across the world. He's okay. in Cambodia right now. Oh. Uh, and so like he's preaching the gospel there. He's preaching in Tanzania. He's preaching in the Philippines. He's going everywhere in Africa and Kenya and all this stuff. So we support him. Okay. It, it, that's on top of everything. On top else. of the yeah, other Yeah, because, right. because we, we believe in the gospel and we want it to go everywhere. And if, if the only thing that's holding him back is money and we have some money, why can't we? Right. Why you know can't you I mean? help him out? Because, but I, I think you. people think it, think of it as a checklist. Because okay. they're still in this mindset of like, I need to get brownie points with God. Right, right, right. So that I can earn yeah, my way me, to do it. Let me see if I'm getting all the way in here. Exactly right. Yeah, yeah. I was baptized. Check. Yeah. Okay, 10%. <laughs> exactly right. Check. Yeah, yeah. Don't tell me I yeah, have extra yeah, money. Yeah. yeah. Right. Or or people will use fear. You know, I, oh, yeah, right. I've heard people say, if you don't tithe, God's going to take it out in hospital bills. And so you're wow. because you're stealing from God and all this nonsense. That's not true. Because if I go to heaven based upon Jesus's merit, right. then how can I lose favor with God based upon where my checkbook goes? Makes complete so, sense. So yes, absolutely. Should I live a holy life? Yeah, because I right. love Christ. Right. So I I, I give because Christ gave His life for me. Right. But it's not under this weird, th- un- under the thumb compulsion. Right. Right. I'm not guilted into no, it. No. Exactly. Right. right. No. There, I'm there, not, I'm there's not afraid. No. He set me free and liberated me in His love, so that I could be free to give, and so that I could be free to preach the gospel and love Him and love others. It's it's just how it works. I don't know. We answered the question. I, I lost the question again. <laughs> You have such good information. You can answer all these questions I've had for years. <laughs> you've, you've answered questions into the future at this point. <laughs> like he's just like, okay, that one's good. That one's good. All right, we'll number four. Are there any positive aspects to the commercialization of religion, such as increased outreach or funding for charitable causes? No. No, no. Because, no. And, and this That's is not what, what they're using the money for. Well, and not even that. Not exclusively what they're using. But the even money if for. they were, what, right. I, what I'll say is this. this this is the analogy I use a lot because I think it's really stark. So if you have a woman that is naturally beautiful, right? There's no makeup, there's no mini skirt, there's no nothing. Just she is beautiful just as she is. Right? I do. She, she's going to attract people that are not looking for those worldly attributes. And so what I think the church does and they it's a big swing and a miss and it's really dangerous to do this cuz this is Christ's bride. We, we the church is the bride of Christ. So to take this woman and go, "You know what?" We're really missing this opportunity to get these guys out here. And you put five inch heels on her and a mini skirt and fishnets and you push up bra and this whole thing and you cake her face full of makeup and you send her out to the world. She's not going to attract the people 
that are holy, she's going to attract unholy people. Mm -hmm. And the problem with that is, is that they're going to take advantage of her. And that's what's happened. We have a lot of people that are in the church right. that are not truly of the church, if okay. that makes sense. So people that are in the church in the sense of they, they go on Sunday, right? but they don't, they don't trust Christ with their whole life. They haven't been born again. They don't live a holy life. There's mixture there. Right. And they abuse the church. And they don't. And so then the it's pastor. like to tell people to go to church. And then the pastor comes up and he caters his message to those people. Right. And then, now, now all the while, Christ's true people are starving. Christ's true sheep are starving out in the pasture because he's trying to entertain the, the, these people in the middle of the middle of the platform. And so the problem with that is, is that it's not pleasing to God. It's not what church is for. It's not, it, 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 it's just not a holy way of doing anything. And it doesn't actually bring any fruit. Does it bother you when the sermon is, uh, when they make it entertaining to keep the crowd happy? Uh, define entertaining. Uh, add little jokes or make it more uh, more modern, the way they talk about something. I mean, if he so, uses so like you, a, So you understand better? No, I mean, if he's going to use like an anecdote, like a right. story to make sense of something, like I, you know, tons of preachers have done this throughout the ages. They use illustrations, they use stories, they use right. anecdotes, it's true. But I think we've gone so far to the other end of the spectrum with that that it's become a circus, right? Mm -hmm. Like we, j I just saw a video of a men's conference where they had monster trucks, pyro, oh, so oh, and we like go and so. But again, sorry, this, this, We're, no. But, <laughs> we'll oh, talk yeah, no, after no. the show though. But this, this is exactly. <laughs> but this is it. you guys are confirming my point. It gets people in the room. Sure, that's it. But then you leave the room. But and you're getting you, the wrong people into the room. Exactly, and so and, or, they just want the or, monster trucks and stuff. Or you're getting the people that come for that, and they don't, and and they plug their ears, and and they won't repent. Yeah. And so, it, and then they leave the conference, and everyone goes, "Oh, we had such a great conference. We had seven thousand in attendance." It's like, yeah, but like, where did they go? Like they just came to your conference and then left to go continue to get enough religion just to send them to hell. Make them feel better and they sleep. Wait, a little bit wait, wait, what? Night. They got enough religion to send them to hell? To send them, to, yeah, because because they have enough information, enough information about God to think that God is okay with their life. Oh, okay. So when you roll up to someone I, and like, you go, "Was it a short lived now?" <laughs> so when you I don't go, know if I have enough. So when you roll up to someone and you go, "Hey, man, Jesus loves you," right? My friend has a story. This is an anecdote that's helpful to prove my point. There you this go. is what I'm doing. So my friend's preaching the gospel on the streets of New York. Right. He goes to a guy and he goes, hey, bro, Jesus loves you. And the guy goes, yeah, man, everybody loves me and keeps walking. <laughs> now, that story's fantastic. Right. Because it proved to my friend that he had no idea how to actually present someone with a gospel that could save his life. And to rescue him right. out, out, out of sure damnation. Right. Because he was like, oh, Jesus loves me too. Wait, you said earlier that he can't rescue somebody. No, no, I'm saying the message. Oh, okay. So, so, right. so if I'm going to, if I'm going to give you a message, I right. have to give it exactly how it was given to me. I can't, it right. can't be telephone. Right, right. You know what I mean? Right, right, yeah, yeah. And so that's what's, that's what's happened is we've, we've tweaked it here. We've tweaked oh, okay, it there. Okay, I got you. Right, And then right. by the time it gets to the person, it's just Jesus loves you. Cause that right. makes, that, that there's, 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 there's no confrontation so, right. there. If I go right. up to a sinful person and I say, hey, Jesus loves you, they're going to be like, oh, thanks, man. Right. Yeah. That's it. Yeah, if yeah, I go yeah, up to yeah, someone yeah. and I say, hey, man, the Bible says that you're under God's wrath and that God provided a sacrifice for you, but you need to repent of your sins and trust in Christ. That opens up a whole nother can of worms. Right. <laughs> that opens up a whole nother avenue for them to be like, screw you, man. You don't know me. Right. You don't know me. I'm a good person. I never killed nobody. Right. But Jesus says, if you hated someone in your heart, you already murdered them. Oh. Jesus says, if you looked lustfully at somebody, you already committed adultery. Oh. And so this brings everybody under condemnation. Everyone's goes, Oh well, we won't God, see, we won't see John in the afterlife, but it being Brandon. Will be well, so now what do we do now? Oh God, I need a savior. Thankfully there is one, right? There is a savior. We need to repent and trust and follow him. Can you do that and still look at a pretty girl? You can't lust after. Her. Okay. Well, all right. Okay. Defi I got define you lust at, after her. <laughs> <laughs> what page is that? The Bible on? says what page is that? the Bible basically defines <laughs> lust as you fantasizing about her in your heart. Fuck. <laughs> right. Also coarse language, but that's not the oh, end of that. Oh <laughs> yeah, you swear you do swear a lot over there. <laughs> no, so but but this is an interesting concept because your your question is answered in John chapter six. Jesus feeds the five thousand, right? We all know that story. Five right. goes two fish, breaks it, right, right. feeds no, everybody. Food everywhere. But the next day, that same crowd goes to follow, goes to come to Jesus again. Right. And Jesus looks at them and he goes, 
you guys don't want to be with me. You just want more bread. Just want, yeah, want more food. So he says, you know what? Eat my flesh, drink my blood. It's the whole discourse on on him him being the the the, the blood being the wine of his sacrament and his sacrifice and the, the flesh being his body or the bread being his body. And the whole crowd leaves them. Jesus is not concerned. He does this with the rich young ruler as well. Right. He keeps it moving. He doesn't stop and, and be like, all right, well, you know what? Why don't you follow me for a day? And then, like, we'll see how this works. You do, right. like, a trial period, and right. you tell me what you think, and maybe we can, like, make something yeah, work. Yeah, we, we can we find can, a like, middle ground. Yeah, we can barter and, you know, maybe right. a little bit. Jesus goes, no, either sell all you have and give it to the poor, and then come follow me or nothing. And he, the Bible says he walks away bitterly because he had much wealth. And so Jesus makes it very clear that this is a narrow road. And it's not just a narrow gate, but it, the road is narrow. Right. So the entrance is narrow, and the way that we're on is narrow. But thankfully, Jesus has provided a sacrifice for all of our sins if we trust in him and we are led by him and we live a life of repentance and we bear fruit. See, so you can repentance. be okay with the lusting and the swearing. I, I can't. No. <laughs> oh. I'm, I'm a legs man. I'm, I can't. Like that. Ugh. You can look. You just don't fantasize about having sex with her. I don't know if that's... Oh, you can't even look? Well, I mean, here's the thing. Here's the well, thing. Well, if, you, if you've if you lusted gonna... in your heart, that's what uh, that's the way right. I'm but understanding that. I, I thought about... I on his butt. But again, it's the... But, but it's <laughs> and the thank wrong, you, But it's the wrong question, right? You're asking how far is too far versus... Oh, yes, you're right. Versus am I, am I sinning against God? And how do I keep myself from sin? So what do you do when you see a pretty girl? You can't just... I mean... That's nice. I think... Just walk away the Well, other I think that... Because again... If I happen to look at somebody right. and it enters into my heart, right. I ask for forgiveness. I repent. Oh, of, there's an out. I, well, no, there's not an out. I, oh. I, I truly repent of my sin. Right. Usually sorrowful, sorrowfully and maybe with tears. I don't know. I mean, I ask Wait, God. I mean, you can't really help it sometimes. Well, no, I mean, I. but I think, again, like I think a, a, good, a good rule of thumb is like you can't, because again, our, our culture is so hypersexualized. Right, right. You can't help but see things sometimes, but you can help second second glances. Right, 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 right. You know what yeah, I mean? Yeah. If you like see somebody, you're like, geez, okay, wow, that's, that's a lot. Right. So, so if you accidentally catch a glance of a, wo- a woman, like let's say she's walking down the street and, you know, maybe she's got some like a short miniskirt on. If you catch a glance of it, then how do you repent on that? I would ask the Lord for forgiveness and to and to. Okay, for a second there, I thought you said earlier heart. was that you apologize to the woman. Oh no 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 no! I, I'm no. like that'd be an awkward no, conversation. No 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 no! I'm weird, that. sorry. No no <laughs> okay. no no! I didn't say that. No that that would be weird. That would be weird. That'd be really weird. I'm just gonna start um, walking up to random women. <laughs> just and just apologizing. apologizing. <laughs> no yeah, I, I didn't looked look at, at your you. ankles. <laughs> They're nice. No yeah, but 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 again, I mean that's that. If you have been saved, the the Bible is very clear. If you have been saved, then put your mind on things above mm-hmm. and not of below. And so the Bible says to put off the old man and put on Christ. And what okay. that means is basically to to put on, or depending on how you read the Greek and Hebrew, it's a whole thing. But mm-hmm. basically he's saying, if you've been saved, live like you've been saved and ask God to help you live that life. That's why God has put his Holy Spirit inside of all of his people so that he would teach them his law. As the Bible says uh, of the new covenant in Ezekiel 36, 26, he says, I'll take out their heart of stone, give them a heart of flesh, and I'll write the law, my law on their heart so that we would walk in a way that's pleasing to the Lord. The Bible says to walk worthy of your calling, meaning walk worthy of the fact that Christ rescued you, saved you, and has set you on this path of sanctification or making you more holy. Okay. So, yeah. But it's a life of repentance. It's not like I didn't get born again, you know, 10 years ago and then go, oh, man, <laughs> figured it out. <laughs> I've back arrived. And- <laughs> I'm good now. No. I'll, I'll figure it out the next 10 years and I'll do it again. Yeah, well, exactly right. And, and, and so, again, like, obviously, you know, when I got saved, I was deep into pornography, mm-hmm. deep into it. And so that was a struggle for the first years of my Christian life, but I hated it. I think the the good delineation between unsaved and saved is this. Do you love the God that you once hated and do you hate the sin that you once loved? That's the switch. Yeah. And that's where a lot of people go, oh man. Yeah. Because the Bible says those who hate God would pretend obedience to him. And so if we go to church and we go, yeah, you know, just I'm doing my best, man. I'm just trying really hard. But you know, in your heart, you, that your heart condemns you and, and, and you know that you can't save yourself and you know that you're not living 
in a way that is pleasing to Christ or a way that exalts him as savior. And so you go, wow, I have failed miserably. Lord, please help me. And so that, that's, that's the switch. When I talk about being born again, right. That's the switch. It's, I hated God and now I, I desire to love him. And I, and, and I what? hate this sin that I was doing just yesterday. Even. Why would somebody hate him? I mean, you hear the thing about when, well, like, like, my wife died, so now right. I hate God. Well, yeah, yeah, I don't yeah. think they that, hate God. They hate the idea that, the things like that we he want, about. The things he wants you to do. Not only that, but I think that, the, like we were talking about, the commercialization of church that right. these people have put into their like a, their mind. Right. Yeah. Well, I mean, I mean, the Bible does say that there's none righteous. There's not one. When, when, when Adam and Eve fall... That original sin, that sin nature is embedded into all of humanity. Mm -hmm. And so as soon as a person is like, you don't have to teach a kid to say no or lie. This is the reality. Right, right. They just do it. Like they just do it. They're like, right. no, that's mine, man. Back off. You know, it's just, it's just, or like, hey, yeah, do did this. You, did and you eat like, the cookie? Nope. 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 No, 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 I got a three-year-old we need to talk to right. if you right. wanted. <laughs> right. Exactly. And so, <laughs> right. and so Romans, Romans chapter three is very clear. There's none righteous. They, they are haters of evil. They, the, the, they are haters of good. They love evil. They think of new ways to sin. They celebrate those that sin and they are proud of their sin. And this is, it's our culture in a nutshell. Mm-hmm. All right, we got 15 minutes left. Let's Sorry. move on a little bit. That's, that's okay. Uh, <laughs> do you believe that the commercialization of religion has led to a distortion of religious principles and values? Oh, absolutely. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> We've been talking about that all night so far. <laughs> <laughs> so we're about. They Next question. They, now they, it's rapid fire. Now right, it's rapid they bastardized fire. The, the religion for their uh, ill-gotten gains or, or whatever. You yeah. need to put a little... <laughs> ask the question they put on the little screen on, the, on YouTube. See... 14 minutes, 30 seconds or something. <laughs> With a little timestamp? <laughs> a little timestamp. Yeah. How, uh, how do digital platforms and social media contribute to the commercialization of religion? Well, now, I mean, everyone's everyone's on TikTok now. All these Gen Zers are on TikTok. Right. Preaching the gospel, preaching this, preaching that, preaching doomsday stuff. This is going on in Israel. This is going oh, on. Yeah, yeah, this going. It, I mean, it, it's chaos. Mm -hmm. it, it's just a wild west out there. And if you have a camera... And a crispy microphone. You can say whatever <laughs> yeah, you let's, want. Yeah, let's upgrade your microphones, people. You, you can say whatever you want to anybody. And if right. enough people are going to believe you, you're going to get a huge right. follow. I, I know a guy on YouTube that has a million, a million subscribers right now. And I know for a fact this guy's living in sin. It's, it, it, I mean, oh, it's, oh, he's it's, doing religious stuff, yeah, but, but he's, yeah, he's, he's out, living he's, the other way. Yeah, he's out there preaching and this and that and the other thing. And it's just really sad, man. It's re it's really sad. And, 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 and it grieves my heart because they're not committed to it. They're not committed to it. And, and it's all a show. Do as I say, right. not as I do. Exactly right. And, and, and so God literally hates that. He calls the Pharisees hypocrites and blind guides and broods of vipers and evil and sons of Satan. Like he's, he's Jesus is not happy with these people. And so... That makes me sad. And so that's why I believe a lot of this social media stuff is great because you can actually get stuff out there. You right. Know, you can hit a larger we audience. You can do this. Right. This yeah. is great. But also, there, there, I mean, it's two sides of the same coin. You, right. It's just, it literally is amoral. You can use it for whatever you want to use it for, but what you use it for is going to determine what, what fruit you get, what you sow, you're going to reap. Oh, that was good. All right. Number nine. What role do you think consumerism plays in the commercialization of religion? Oh man, I mean it's huge. You can buy, people think they can buy their way into heaven. Well, that and then also it just depends on like like you can change your theology based upon where you go down the street. Oh yeah, I mean it may I mean if this church has a great kids ministry, you're gonna be like I need a break, I need to go here, and so you just you just go wherever. Oh, where we go to church, you pass four churches to get to that one. Totally right, totally because some maybe it's like okay, maybe, this is a street we're putting all the churches on here in yeah. town, so this is where everybody's maybe, gonna go. Maybe Which one's one? a, you want Catholic, you want Presbyterian, right. you yeah, want yeah. Methodist, 100%. or do you want the other one? With and it? then you get the ones with the drive-throughs and yeah, well, yeah. I mean, I mean, at the end of the day, like like consumerism is. Like consumerism and commercialization, they go hand in hand. Right. Like they're 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 kissing cousins because what what they do is they create this. It's all about me. Right. Everything is about me. How does it serve me? What can I get from it? What right. is what what do you what are you gonna give me that I can do to better my life? Versus right. yeah. how can I give myself away and serve. How can and I help better? How can I help? How can I love Christ better? Are right. you going to tell me about Jesus? Right. A lot of times you have churches that are so hype focused. Right. That it's like, oh man, if they don't have good music, I'm not going. They, they right. don't ever you know, even somebody, look at the, they don't even look at the platform. Somebody asked me, does your church have good music? I like right. good music at church. I'm like, right. well, they've got a little band, you know, right. and they it's, sing and dance. But and it's like, 
I've never heard the question from a nominal non-denominational churchgoer of, hey, does your pastor preach Christ and Christ crucified every week? That's the question we got to ask. Because that the Bible says the gospel is the power of God into salvation. That's right. it. That's, That's it. all we got. Right. There's nothing else. Music isn't it. Hype, pyrotechnics, monster It doesn't say in there that we have to sing. <clears throat> Well, no, it does. It says oh, okay. li lift up your voice right, and right. shout okay. to the right. Lord. Absolutely. I was like, well, they're doing a lot of singing. Oh, well, no, we have to. Wor necessary. No, wor worshiping Christ looks like songs, hymns, spiritual songs. It also looks like giving. It also looks like how you think, how your what your heart desires, what you how you speak to your wife, how you speak to your kids. It's, I mean, it's everything. Right. W worshiping Christ is not an hour and 15 minutes on a Sunday, and then you curse out the guy on I-4 because he cut you off. Oh. That's <laughs> He is not going to heaven over there. I'm not, not. I am not. not I got a lot now. of work to do. <laughs> yeah, a lot of, but John I will, will talk to you after the show. I will tell you definitively, <laughs> Jesus Christ is the only way of salvation. And if you trust in him and repent of your sins, he will save you from your sins. He'll save you from the wrath of God. He'll save you from death, hell, and he'll even save you from yourself. Because if I know anything, <laughs> if I know anything about my life, I've dug myself more ditches than, oh, than yeah, yeah, the right. devil's ever dug me. Right. You know what I mean? Right. I've ruined my life. I don't need life. his help. Yeah, I don't need the devil's help. He's just like, here, 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 here He's it is. throwing you the ideas. And you're, I'm like, oh, sweet, man. That sounds right. like fun. You jump into a pit. You know what I mean? Right. He's so, walking anyway. up and going, I'm already in a pit, dude. What do you yeah. want? Yeah, yeah, exactly right. Yeah, totally. Oh. It's, <laughs> <laughs> there's like, there's almost like there's, well, you, we think there's like levels of sins. Mm. See, but, that's but what I was thinking, like a chart. Like, we're not that... Yeah, I'm not... We're not you know, Hitler, not, right, right. you know. Right. Like, but that's but, not... That's not... That's well, not the I, fact. Apparently, they're... Well, they're well, it's a yes or no. Well, mm. well, I'll say this about sin. Sin sin is... There are consequences of different sins, right? Right. <clears throat> so oh, has, really? Is there... There's... Well, right. There's different punishments for different ones? No, not... Well, I mean, you, you're going to hell <laughs> for any... But what I mean is... What I mean by that is... If I lie to my wife... Yeah. I'm probably going to sleep on the couch. Okay. If I lie in a court, I go to jail for okay. perjury. If gotcha. I lie um, before Congress, it's 25 to life. Right, right, right. right, right. So my point is, is the consequence has to do with the party that's offended. Okay. So what I mean, if you smoke three packs a day of Marlboros, right. you might get lung cancer and die. That's right, a right, consequence right. of that sin. Okay. If you eat cheeseburgers day and night, for the rest of your life, you're probably going to balloon up to 300 right. pounds and die. Okay. But if you have adultery in your heart and you never act on it, you could probably get away with it in your life. Right. But you will not get away with it before God. So what I mean by that is, yes, there's different consequences for sin, like <laughs> looking lustfully in the heart or having an affair. They're different. And there's different levels of the shockwave of that sin. But as far as uh, Jesus and God's concerns, the same thing. Judicially? Yeah. Yeah. As before God the judge, yeah, right. they all damn. But right. even if you could perfectly obey God, you couldn't go to heaven because you are you have a sinful nature. Right, right, right. You've been born into sin. So wait, nobody goes to heaven? No, 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 no. no. Oh. What, 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 what I mean is is that even if you obeyed all the rules, right, right. Okay. you didn't have a chance. Oh, I got you. Okay. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah, so yeah. So Jesus, that's why Jesus became a man in the okay. womb of a woman. He added to his divine nature a human nature so that right. he could both pay for the wrath of God. Right pay for the judgment and punishment of sin right. and also be our representative and our high priest. Okay. So simultaneously he does both. He's okay. called the God man. Okay. He's, that's why he's so wonderful because nobody has done what he has done and no one will ever do what he has done. Gotcha. Perfect work. Absolutely. Absolutely. By the way, you had to say Marlboro's. I'm sitting here with a pack of Marlboro's in my pocket. Are you really? <laughs> he smokes cigarettes. I, I am so, I, I'm, well, I'm not really sorry. I'm switching I'm not really brands sorry today. <laughs> Hey, he's gonna, be, he's gonna so. have a he's gonna have a carton of Newports tomorrow. Oh hell no, those things are too damn expensive. <laughs> Virginia Slims, <laughs> fucking Virginias. I'm not turning into my aunt from Texas. <laughs> watch, and apparently, watch the language over there. Oh, <clears throat> all right. What role do you think consumerism plays? Oh, I lost the place. What role do you think consumerism plays in the commercialization of religion? Is that oh. question number nine? Because you already asked that. That's, Oh, did I? Yeah, if that, if that oh, was... Oh, I, I yeah. thought it sounded familiar. Yeah, 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 we talked about it. Yeah, All right, the, yeah, okay, the, this is going to work out. We're on question 10. I did right. skip I did skip uh, two questions in the middle because okay. they were repeats. How can individuals and communities maintain the integrity of their religious beliefs yeah. in the face of commercial pressures? Right here. The book. Oh, I thought he was putting the book away. Like, no, no, okay, no, 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 no. no. He's so, going to hit you with so, it. So, That's what he's so, no, not at all. <laughs> this is. I mean, it's it's a big Bible, but it's not a weapon. So really, you pick a church that you like based on what goes on, but... 
you got to go back to the book because Absolutely. he might not be doing what's in the book. Exactly right. So, so the so the Bible is explicitly clear that this 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 word here does it say anywhere the like in the beginning like it says based on interpretation of no. So there are there are majors and there are minors. Okay. In theological understandings. Okay. So like Ryan upstairs, right, right, shout right. out to Ryan Clark. He baptizes his babies. Right. I do not. Okay. So I'm a Baptist. He's a Presbyterian. Okay. We're still well. W- think the newsletter I get from my church that I'm yeah, part yeah. of, I can baptize. I tell my wife that all the time. When we baptize yeah. again, I'll right? Just, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, so that's the thing. So, like that, that that that's a minor issue that we would differ on. Okay, we just did a mass baptism at churches last Sunday, yeah. but the pastor wasn't who was doing the dunking. It was an associate pastor. I don't even know that. I oh. mean, because I mean, it could have been any. I, it I was the no parking idea. lot attendant, Bill. <laughs> well, I don't know. Yeah. It was just you know two guys that had t-shirts on. Oh, I don't know. I mean, it could have been one of the pastors or what. I, I I have no idea. Or maybe they wife, had a sub in or something. Yeah. Like, I like. Well, how can you know if you you say I can't baptize? Right. How can that guy who showed us where our seat was? Well, no, that's true. People. Yeah, no, absolutely. But there are major and minors that we would differentiate on based on interpretation. Okay, but. The deity of Christ, Christ being God, yeah, the big, the big for, stuff, the, the the big apostles and Nicene Creed stuff. Right, 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 right. That stuff we have to agree on, or it's not a church. It's right. A cult, the Ten it's Commandments. Nonsense. Everybody agrees At, yeah, that those are the same. The, the Bible being infallible and inerrant, and it being the true Word of God. Because otherwise, what standard do we have? Right. We don't have any other standard. So, if you're looking for a church, find out what you believe and why you believe it. Because gotcha. that's so important. Like I remember, when we were looking for a church. I was like, well, what do we believe about? church what's our even uh, what is our ecclesiology what's our theology of church and how it should be should it be run by elders should it be run and we have to go to the scripture to find that and we go okay i believe that i believe this and then you go and you look for a church that does that and then you go are oh, these, these major points so I- did, i'm sorry to interrupt but did, oh, yeah. did you go in and like have a like an interview with the with the pastor like this no. is, or you just went on a couple of times you're yeah. like yeah so i okay, went okay i'm comfortable here so they, i went a couple know. times and then i looked at what confessions they abided by Okay. So I did a lot of theological work to study the creeds and confessions. There's a there, there's a confession called the 1689 London Baptist Confession of Faith. Okay. Or 1689 LBCF. You seem more knowledgeable than the average churchgoer. Sadly. Right. I think that's I think but a biblical illiteracy is one of the main reasons why these guys stick around. Oh yeah, sure. Cuz you just fleece them. Right, you right. Just pull the wool over their eyes. Right. And they, they say, yo, yo, you yeah. yell and scream and they're like, during oh, the thing. And I, this is a message from God. And everyone goes, ooh. Right. And then they're, and then they're hooked. You know what I mean? It's right. just the reality of it. Yeah. We, uh, we don't um, know if he's reading from the Bible or if he's reading from a comic book. Or if he reads from the Bible and then he gives you his like weird interpretation of it. Oh, he does that. How do you, how do you know? Right. But it's got to line up with the faithful interpretation of the church through 20 centuries. We have histories of this stuff. And right. so if it never, if it was never, if the church never believed this and you go, I have a new revelation, that's usually a bad sign. <laughs> oh. I I'm came making, up with this I'm great idea. Over here now. It's the perfect example of when people say, I know when Jesus Christ is going to come back. When Jesus himself said, I don't even know the day or the hour. So the really? moment I. It says, is he doesn't know when he's coming back? Jesus says, yes. How do these people say, that? oh, he's coming? It's the mind. Well, because the, Bible, because the Bible says clearly that he is coming and he is coming quickly, but we don't know. Well, okay. We don't know when or. or it says or, he's or, coming and he's coming quickly. Absolutely. But how old is that book? Well, there's. A, it was written over the course of like. You know. That's what I mean. So what is what is quickly? Exactly. Right. But the Bible. The Bible also says in Second Peter three that a, a day is as a thousand years to the Lord because he doesn't exist oh, in right, time. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. Time. Means he doesn't exist in time. Right. He's he the creator just sat of time. down and then get back up and go. Exactly okay. Right. Time to go back. Yeah. We have. We have no idea. Like we need to understand who we're dealing with. We're not dealing with like Frank at Winn Dixie. <laughs> this is God Almighty. Right. The, the 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 clouds are the dust of his feet, and he he puts the waters of the earth in a bag. I mean, he's he's God Almighty. Right. And that's who we have to deal with at the end of our life. So do you think he made aliens too? Is that a thing? I don't think aliens are real. I think they're demons. Oh, that's a good one. Yeah. That's interesting. That's actually really good. Yeah. It is. I think, I think the best way to sidetrack people too, just government wise, is probably to... Oh, I know. Get them... We, had, we did an episode on that. Yeah, I'm sure. Oh, yeah. We know of a show that did an episode on that. Yeah. <laughs> We're not cross-tracking shows. So. <laughs> cross-tracking shows. Oh, man. So, okay, what, what, one more question because yeah. we're almost out of time here. Yeah, yeah. Uh, how do we know which religion is the right one? Well, um, I mean, with all the different choices out there, yeah, yeah, yeah. and then you spin off with uh, the guy who said he saw Jesus in a piece of toast. 
Sure. I mean, yeah, we'll go. Yeah. I mean, no, how, you know, I, how, I, is, I mean is, is, are the Jewish people right? Are the uh, Hindu people right? Uh, no, the I would, tree worshiper. Jesus says, it's in, just whatever that book is. Jesus says in John 14, six, right? I am the way, the truth and the life. No one comes to the father, but through me. Okay. So then, so then we, we've got what a half a dozen to a dozen religions that go by the book. Well, it's just Christianity. Oh, so it doesn't matter if you're Presbyterian, if you're Episcopalian. No, no, no. Denominations just tell you, denominations just give you a framework of their theology. So Ryan is Presbyterian because he baptizes babies and he has a Presbytery of different churches and stuff. Right. I'm Baptist because we baptize believers. We hold a certain confession, but we're all part of the same body. Gotcha. Okay. Yeah. So it really doesn't matter. As long as you, as long as you pick one, as long as you can prove what you believe right. by the by the Bible, and you trust Christ for your salvation, and you've been born again and right. washed by the Spirit, and you've been sealed by the Holy Spirit, we are brothers and, and sisters I, in Christ. And you spend the money, and you buy the book, and I don't know, it's so confusing. They, they give Bibles just, away for free. I know, but you can buy them too. Well, yeah, sure. That's, that's if you want the pretty one. That's uh, true. This yeah, is, I have a pretty. I have the like yeah, high grain yeah, leather. Yeah, I a, absolutely, I have a, I have a pretty one. I, I mean, hey, pe- people, gold leaf. People gold spend hundreds of dollars on single cigars. I'm going to spend money on the Word of God. I yeah, mean, come on, man. Right. No, no, I feel that. But then that goes back into the whole like, you see people that put their money into the church and they. Oh yeah, yeah. Like, yeah, yeah. it's some people let treat it, treat a Bible or treat like a like a handbag or a purse. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, it's meant to be read, right? It's. Uh, Oh, I thought you meant that. You know, I heard it's meant to be red, like the color, and I'm like, You're no, no, black, no, no, it's bro. meant to be like, like the red ones are the really good ones. R E A D, yes. <laughs> yeah, I got. <laughs> sorry, brain fart. <laughs> no, that's, good. that's okay. You're going to hell anyway. We already found that out. Uh, yeah. You don't have to. You don't have to. John can save. Well, no, he can't he, save you, but he, he can, can tell you. Right he direction. can tell you how to be safe. Yeah. That's what it comes down to. That's what we've learned. Well, when I come at you and say roll your sleeves up, then then we'll we'll talk because there's going to be a lot of work. In hey, that man, <laughs> Jesus is the Bible says in Hebrews seven twenty five. Jesus says the Bible says he is able. Jesus is able to save to the uttermost. He is able to save you eternally and completely. All we have to do is look unto him for salvation. I mean, I've turned around, but I've had a really rough life. I, hey like, man, me, me too, man. We, we could we could swap stories. We could talk about it. Absolutely. Uh, I might have a few at the top of you there. Hey man, bud. hey man, that's fine with me. We'll, we'll we'll talk about it. All right, go to Gamer One. Let's get out of here. All right, thank you to this week's Plus One, John Richard, for sharing his insights and making our conversation so engaging. Tune in next week for another thought provoking episode on the Palmer Show Plus One podcast. Until then, stay curious and keep the conversations going. Thanks. Yeah. The Palmer Show Plus One Podcast, its owners and sponsors, take no responsibility for the opinions or statements made by the talk show host or their guest. Statements or show topics are not necessarily the belief of Mike and Mike Productions or the podcast provider, and opinions between talk show hosts may differ. It is not our intention to libel, incite, or hurt anyone's feelings. We invite you to write the show's host, Mike Palmer, with any feedback or suggestions that you have for their shows. These broadcasts are presented and made public as entertainment in the hopes that they will be entertaining to the audience.